Hello, and welcome to another BlenderWiz video tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to set up our camera to work as a very simple FPS shooter style view. We will use parenting, logic bricks, and Python to allow our camera to walk around the world. We will parent the camera to a character object, then use logic bricks to use the keyboard to control the position of our character object, and finally use a Python script to allow the mouse to control where we are looking. I'm going to use the scene that we created in the uh, texture mapping and game assets tutorials. If you want to learn how to create it, check those out. And uh, the texture mapping tutorial covers how to create the, uh, the terrain and paint the textures onto it. And the game assets t tutorial teaches you how to create the trees, the rocks, and the water. Starting with our pre-created scene, we're going to go ahead and bring in a cube or some character object. Since this is going to be an FPS design, we don't have a, uh, or we don't really need a detailed character object. Uh, the object is really only for collision detection. And so for this reason, I'm going to use a low poly cube object. Once you have your character in the scene, position your camera over it in uh, such a way that we cannot see the mesh. So, I've got the um, the cursor already centered on the cube, so the easiest way to move it over is to hit Shift S, and then Selection to Cursor, and then I'm just going to uh, hit G and then Z, and just drag it up like so. And then let's clear the rotation, because it's kind of rotated at a weird angle, by hitting Alt R, and now it's facing straight down. So let's go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees along the X. Also, if your cube is huge, like this one is, let's scale it down so that it kind of fits into the size of the world. So, something like that. Not too big, um, and that should work fine. So once you have your character cube all set up, let's go ahead and select the camera and the cube itself for the character object. Hit Control P to bring up the parent or the parenting menu, click Object, Keep Transform. And this will maintain the distance or the offset of our uh, of our camera from the cube, but uh, it will parent the two together, so now if we move our cube around, the camera will follow it. Now it's time to get into the logic bricks. So head over to the uh, game logic screen here, and Let's just make it so that we can see the textures by switching the viewport shading to textured. And uh, now we're going to start giving the cube the ability to move. So first thing we want to do is give the character object or the character cube out some physics. So head over to the physics tab in the properties panel. And under here, let's set the uh, physics type to character because our uh, cube is the character cube. Now, I do recommend going through and playing with these and seeing what they do. They all behave a little bit differently, and for different instances, some are better than others. Let's also check actor, because it's an active, uh, active object in our world. And that should be good if uh, we pull this up and then hit the P key, the cube will fall. This is fun, but we can't really do anything with it from this point. If we uh, go into camera view, so hitting uh, 0 on the numpad, and then hitting P, um, well, we can look from the camera position, but we can't move around, we can't go anywhere, we can't really do anything, we can just look at the ground and sit here. So, to, f to deal with this, we're going to start giving our cube some logic. So uh, let's go ahead and make the keyboard control our cube. So let's come down here with the cube selected, um, add sensor, and there are a bunch of different things that sense things. So you got uh, actuator, I'm not really sure what that one does, but um, always is always sending a signal. Collision is when one object collides with another object. Delay, it waits for something to happen or not really waiting for something to happen, but it just waits for a certain amount of time. Joystick, keyboard, and mouse are all getting inputs from 
to our respective object. Uh, messages, it sends messages between different objects. And there are a whole bunch of them, so play around with them, see how they work. Uh, we want keyboard. And so the keyboard sensor here has a bunch of different things in it that are all related to the keyboard. So the key is what key is pressed, or you can have all key, um, and that means any key that gets hit will cause something to happen. What that something is, is up to you. So now that we have our sensor, we need an actuator. And the actuator is basically the action. What happens? What happens when our sensor senses something? And we want it to move. So let's keep bring in a motion. And since this is a character, let's set it to character motion, which enables jump. And then, just like in the node editor, we just clip the two together, and it'll actually throw in a default AND gate. Now, people who know Boolean logic, this is Boolean. Um, the issue that I have with this is AND, NOR, NAND, all of these are binary operators, except for these two. Uh, these two are whatever you make them. Um, but all of these are binary operators, and yet there's only one input, so I'm not sure how you determine what the other input is. It's in there somewhere, but um, that just seems a little bit confusing to me. But overall, it's fine. We can just click the little arrow, and it'll close it down. Uh, I'm going to name this one forward, as long as well as this motion, so forward. And now, um, let's figure out what key we want to use. I'm going to use W, because that's a fairly default key. And that's all you have to do for that. And then over here, figure out which direction is forward on our cube. Uh, it's the y-axis. So let's just set that up. So I'm going to do 0 0.2 is forward. Save that, hit P, and then when we press W, the cube moves forward pretty quickly. So let's slow that down a bit, maybe 0 0.1. That really determ is determined on the scaling of your world. Bigger worlds will feel slower. Smaller worlds will feel faster. So, And since we have physics enabled, and physics is all working, we just walk right up that mountain and over and we fall to our death. How gloomy. Um, so now it's really the same thing over and over again for the rest of the directions. So let's do that. Once all of the directions are set up, it's time to uh, work on the mouse look script. This will allow us to move the, uh, the view of the object with our mouse. So uh, since I don't really feel like getting into the details of Python, and it's a whole lot of math and work, um, we, there is a script that we can use. The script was written by Ryuzaki-san, and I will provide the download link in the description. Uh, I recommend checking out his site, because there's quite a bit of nifty stuff going on there. His Maze Creator game is quite good, or it looks like it's quite good, and um, yeah, it's pretty nifty. Once you've downloaded the zip file, open up the Python file and uh, take the text, or the Python file out, and put it somewhere that you know where it is. And then, once you have it, let's open up the text and then grab that Python file, and Blender will just import it in. So now that we have that, we need to actually tell Blender to do something with it. It's only linked, it's not actually in use. So what do we do? Under the sensor, we bring in a mouse, 
mouse sensor, and let's name this mouse look. And then under the event, check movement. So every time you move the mouse, it will update. And then under controller, bring in a Python script, click on the little text entry, click on mouse, mouse look, connect the two, and now if we hit P, as we move our mouse, the cube will look all over the place. And since that camera is parented, it is looking in the same direction as the cube. So if we uh, go to camera view, let's make this big, uh, hit P, we can look around, we can walk, we can walk around, we can jump, can jump pretty high. <laughs> we must be some sort of kangaroo or something, jumping over trees. Whee! And everything appears to be working just fine. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you want to see more in the future, please subscribe to BlenderWiz if you haven't already. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like it and feel free to watch more tutorials while you are at it. If you have any recommendations or suggestions for future tutorials, feel free to leave some feedback in the comment section. Thank you for watching.